Welcome to Zcast, everyone. I'm Zia Scaravalli from ZK Research, and I'm here at the MGM Grand at AWS reInvent. I'm with Michael Fasello from uh, Commvault. That's right. Uh, Michael, you, uh, what do you do there? So I'm a PM lead for hyperscalers and security, so my, my reach is far and wide. Now we're going to be talking about quantum, which is a fascinating topic, but before we get into the Commvault specific things, I wanted to ask you, where are we with quantum? What are customers asking you about it? Yeah, I, I think the, the big pivotal point when it went from kind of fantasy to, to real was once you started seeing the hyperscalers really being able to provide you know, quantum hours to do work. So I think once that became almost mainstream, people started to actually think like this might actually be a threat. And we work with a lot of government and banks and whatnot. So, you know, we started hearing those concerns also from them. So that's when we started to first start to dive into, like, maybe this is something that we actually need to address. And are we one year away, five years away, 100 years away? Does anybody really know? Um, I would say we're probably one or two years away. I mean, okay. uh, we weren't the only ones that innovated. I know Apple added, you know, post-quantum cryptography to yeah. iMessage and some other things. So, you know, I think... For, for folks that are dealing with governments and banks and really sensitive data or trade secrets, I think you know it's very much a threat vector that they're concerned about. And what are some of the use cases you think for? So, you know, I, I think people are afraid that it's just going to exploit and crack uh, encryption. Yeah, that so, seems to be the thing. Yeah, so, yeah, so for most folks, I would say if they, if they have, you know, encrypted data and they're really concerned about the longevity of it being sensitive, because, you know, sensitive data may have some um, lifetime to it, uh, long-term sensitive data uh, that could be unencrypted could be catastrophic. Now, you recently wrote a blog, and I'll include the link in the YouTube yep. search below, on post-quantum cryptography. That's and right. I want to ask you, uh, first of all, what is it, and why has it become a pressing issue for customers? Yeah, so it's a it's a secondary level of encryption that allows us to, if someone tried to launch an, a, a quantum attack on trying to decrypt, uh, these these data files or these chunks or these trade secrets, uh, they wouldn't be able to do it. So it would take an enormous amount of time, cycles, and money for them to do it. So it provides this like really um, insane amount of uh, protection for such sensitive data. Yeah, is there? And um, I was talking with one of the security vendors. They were saying there's no like immediate threat from quantum decrypting. He thought, but he did feel a bigger threat would be you could record data today and then use. Want them later to decrypt yeah, the data, yeah, right? yeah. So harvest now, decrypt later. Yeah. Absolutely. So yeah. you know that's where you know people that are worried about those times of attacks. And again, you know, data being sensitive for a certain period of time. If you have data that's going to be sensitive for those periods of time, you know, harvest now, decrypt later is absolutely a threat vector yeah. they should be concerned with. Yeah, and it's something I don't know if many people are really thinking about either. Probably not, but yeah, yeah they should and, absolutely should be. And and what what's Commvault doing in this area to help the customers get ready? For yeah. So we released our PQC supportability. So uh, we're using Dilithium. Uh, and Kyber to protect these today. Um, you know, these were these were released as uh, post-quantum cryptography approved uh, ciphers. Um, but we also created an open framework. So if these um, algorithms become updated and we need to swap certain ones in and out, the framework is flexible enough for us to do that. So as the threat vectors evolve, we can evolve with it. Yeah, that's great. And um, I know it, it's interesting, quantum's definitely top of mind. I think companies are trying to understand how to prepare Care for it. Yeah. Um, probably not, you know, goodness, not going to see any immediate deployments, but if, if you're an IT leader and you're thinking about this, what are some things you should be doing today to prepare for it? Yeah, so today I would say if people really need to understand their data, and there's lots of tooling out there that you could, you know, really discover your data and understand the sensitivity level of them. And if you find that there's going to be a long term sensitivity level to that data, that you know, you should absolutely consider you know post quantum cryptography to protect your data. Yeah, and uh, just and when you think about uh, Commvault and, and the role you play in data protection, um, how what are some of the things you're thinking of innovating around? Yeah, so we continue to build out our risk analysis product, which allows us to do that sensitive data and discovery. Uh, it's very customized, and we provide a lot of customization in there because, you know, not one size fits all. So we continue to do that. And, you know, we continue to evolve our product to make sure that it's providing, you know, complete cyber resilience so people can have and maintain continuous business. Yeah, okay. And uh, just uh, 
I'll pivot off a little bit off of quantum here. We are at reInvent, and I know you just did a talk here. Well, what's the Commvault relationship be with AWS? Oh, ma massive, and it continues to grow. Um, you know, I think I opened up the session with, you know, that we've been providing protection and cyber resiliency to AWS customers since 2008 when we first started to integrate with S3. So we have long, deep relationships with them. We have a plethora of capabilities, really deep capabilities, to provide cyber resilience for, you know, our AWS customers alike. Yeah, and I'm glad you're doing that, because I think one of the misunderstood facts about cloud is data protection recovery is a shared responsibility. Absolutely. And, and people tend to think just because I'm in the cloud, it's safe, right? That's right. Yeah. That's right. And, you know, in the in the talk, we talked about security being a shared responsibility, too, and we covered some of our key capabilities yeah. that allow us to facilitate that also. Yeah. And while Amazon does a tremendous amount of work, you know, AWS is a massive security portfolio. No We're doubt. not going to cover everything, right? That's right. So, that's yeah. right. So it's good to have partners like yourself. All right. Appreciate anything it. Anything else you want to add? No, that's all. All right, uh, so on behalf of Michael Casella from uh, Commvault at AWS reInvent, I'm Zia Scaraval from ZK Research Team. Thanks for watching. Again, I'll include a link to your blog. Perfect. And uh, hit the subscribe button. I'll see you next time on my next episode of ZK. Thanks for having me. Thanks.